Today, I'm going to finish up the dust collector installation. Hello fellow CNC nuts, and welcome. In the last couple of episodes, I've been concentrating on routing the dust collection hoses. And this time, I'm moving to the other end of the hose, to the dust collector itself. But instead of connecting that hose direct into the collector, I'm going to build a thin separator and run it into that instead. Now the purpose of the thin separator is to separate out the dust and wood chips before passing on clean air to the dust collector. Basically, it's a compact version of a cyclone. And because it's compact, I'll be able to build it to fit underneath my dust collector. So, without further ado, let's get started. I'm making the top of my thin separator using 22mm or 7 8 inch plywood. I'm using a 90 degree V-bit cutter to cut two circles into the plywood. I then change to a quarter inch down cutting spiral bit and cut the rest of the separator's top out. Before doing the final cut, I check to make sure that the two inside holes are the right size. That way, if they need to be enlarged, they can be. Using a bearinged 90 degree V-bit cutter, I chamfer the edges of both holes on top of the separator's lid. For the final part of this project, I cut the baffle out using some 5mm or 3 16th MDF. I can now assemble the separator lid. I'm using a 100mm elbow and a 100mm piece of PVC pipe. Both pieces are screwed into the top of the separator lid. If you're wondering why the elbow has some of it cut away, it's because it was previously used on another project. I'm using some 12mm threaded rod to hold the separator baffle away at the bottom. For this test I'm using a small bucket of wood chips mixed with some fine dust and I'm just going to suck it up and see what passes through into the dust collector. I've left the top of the dust collector so that we can see any dust and wood chips going past. Clearly there is some finer dust making its way through and I'll have to have a bit of, of play with the adjustments to see if I can improve on that. I'm being very careful not to suck up a huge amount in one hit because that generally isn't how it's created when cutting a project and if I do suck up too much there's a chance I could overwhelm it and it just passes straight through into the dust collector. I'm trying to simulate a real world situation. And here are the wood chips that I managed to collect in the drum. As you can see, it didn't do too bad a job. And if I have a play around with that baffle position, I may be able to improve the separation even further. So let's have a look at how it works. This is the hose coming from the dust collector, and this is the one coming from the dust shoe. I've been around and I've sealed these inlet and outlet hose pipes that I put in here down with some sealer, that's why I put those V-grooves in there. And here, I've sealed this hose here coming from the dust collector into this tube. Be easy enough to replace if I ever have to. I'm relying on the fact that this is a nice tight fit into this 90 degree bend here that it will seal itself off. If it doesn't, I'll deal with that at a later date. Now I also have here a quarter inch groove, it's a quarter inch deep as well, and I plan to go around that with some silicon sealer, put it in there and let it dry. That'll provide a rubberized seal that can then seal against this lip here. So how does it work? 
Well, it's really quite a simple setup. Air flows into here, out around here, and starts turning in an anti-clockwise direction here inside the drum, providing a cyclone. That's turning anti-clockwise, of course, because I live in the southern hemisphere, and uh, due to the Coriolis effect, uh, it spins in that direction. Uh, no, it doesn't actually. I'm just pulling your leg. Spins in that direction because that's the direction this is facing. If I faced it clockwise, uh, then it would have spun in the opposite direction. So, just pick a direction and mount your hose. As the air comes out around here, the dust and wood chips are rubbing against the side walls of the drum here, which slows them down. And because they slow down, they start to drop, and they end up dropping through this notch that's here into the bin. Of course, that notch travels all the way around here, so it sort of spirals its way down into the bin. And really, it's as simple as that. That's the basic principle on which all cyclone separators uh, work. It spins around the outside edge here, rubbing against the edge, and drops lower, so it doesn't again get transferred through to the dust collector itself. One of the great things about a cyclone separator like this is it's pretty simple just to go and empty the drum. That way you don't have to mess around with changing the bags on the uh, dust collectors, which at times can be frustrating. Now you might be looking at this thing and know oh, this hose is a bit of a nightmare, it's a bit long, but there's actually a really easy way of dealing with this. All I have to do is turn the dust collector on. The hose automatically shrinks to a smaller size. And I can just position the drum where it needs to go. This hose simply fits in there like so. And it ends up looking really neat and tidy. Now one thing you might notice is down here, I actually have the filter bag. That's not normally where it belongs. This bag normally belongs on top, not below. So what is it that I've done? No bag on the top here. Well, under this uh, paint bucket lid is actually the bag. I've rolled it up and just put in the top here. And that paint tin lid just makes it look neat and tidy. But why have I reversed the order of the bags? Why is my filter on the bottom and the dust collection bag on the top? Well, in theory, there shouldn't be dust and wood chips coming through to here, so I don't need to collect them. And the filter bag's just as well off at the bottom as it is at the top. It's a lot less unsightly, though. But of course, this is the real world, and the uh, dust is going to get through, and probably a few wood chips occasionally as well. Not a big problem, because the filter will actually catch them anyway. After all, it certainly caught enough dust when it was up the top here. But as that filter bag gets clogged up with any dust that makes its way through, this bag here will have a pressure exerted on it from within, and it should start to actually rise and unfurl. And I'll know at that stage that the filter bag is now clogged with dust, and it needs to be cleaned out. Now, of course, having built this, I will have to suffer the consequences, and I don't mean being pointed at and laughed at in the streets, although well, that's likely to happen. I've introduced something that goes between the dust collector and the dust collection hose, which means I've introduced some losses. I've introduced additional friction, and you don't get something for nothing. The cost of any cyclone system is increased drag and reduced vacuum at the dust shoe. How much that will be, I don't know. Dust collection cyclone systems are a bit of an art form, and simply eyeballing it and designing it and on the fly and uh, trying to make it fit under my dust collector um, really isn't the way to engineer it. But as you can see from my test, it seems to be working okay. How it will perform when it's actually cutting something, I don't know at this stage, and only time will tell. But that's a story for another day. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Why not go and check out some information on thin separators, or even cyclones for that matter? You might want to add one to your setup. Check out my website, www.cncnuts.com. I'll put a link in the description box below. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell to be notified of new episodes as they're released. And until next time, cheers.